the BNP, Jim Shannon, uh, Labour's Alison McGovern and the Conservative Gillian Keegan. Very good to see you all. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. First of all, just I want to go around you all and, uh, you know, your reaction uh, from your different parties to, to the Speaker's actions today. He said he was standing up against the executive for the main body of MPs. Well, I'm a new MP, so I just watched trying to kind of understand what was going on. Um, and it went on for about an hour and, and 20 minutes or so. Points of order after points of order, uh, side after side. Um, uh, largely repetitive by at uh, one point, but, you know, there were deeply technical points. So I actually went to the table office afterwards to say, what am I missing? What's going on? You know, do, can you tell me? And I must say, it, what they basically said was, you know, this was a change. This is something that hadn't been done before. There was a break in precedent. It hadn't been expected the mm. night before by the table office. It was um, something different. Although the speaker has the right to do something different, and you know, he will have probably judged that these are unprecedented times. Therefore, um, you know, that's why he thought it was the right thing to do. But it certainly um, has now. I guess raised a question, which is the one that he's taken away, which is, is this a precedent that now sets a precedent for the Indeed. future? Will well, that change the way, the way we do things works, in the future? It? Uh, uh, um, um, but it was chaotic, I Alison think. Alison McGovern, what do, you, what do you think of it? I mean, on that point that he says, and he's been quite consistent with that throughout his time as Speaker, standing up for, for ordinary MPs against the executive. He, he has, and also this has come off the back of, obviously, the vote being pulled before Christmas. You know, we got halfway through a debate expecting a vote only for it to be pulled away. I, I kind of agree with Gillian, to be honest. He sat there in the middle of all these points of order and it's going on and on and on. I think it was like nearly an hour and 40 minutes or something in the end. And I, you know, I sort of got up and said, like, can we remember the public here? Because mm. we need to get on with this. And uh, but, but, yes, but just to pick up yeah. on that, on the issue of getting on with it, I mean, it's, it's meant that if the, if the uh, PM's plan is, is voted down, then she has to come think, up with an alternative I, by the Monday after. I think a latest. lot of us are worried about the running down of the clock, that, you know, Brexit has a hard deadline of March. We need to know where we are by then. There's been an incredible amount of uncertainty already, which is having a real impact um, for everybody in our country. And that sort of pulling of the vote and, you know, kicking the issue into the long grass over Christmas, I don't think felt okay, right, well, no which is that. why a lot of people are saying exactly no more. OK, well, well to get I, this I mean, Jim with. Shannon, what did, what did you make of it? I mean, the Speaker's actions, let's just focus narrowly on that, first of all, before we broaden it out. I mean, as uh, one of the Brexiteers said, it's mm. uh, like the referee is no longer neutral. I, I always try to be very respectful, Dermot, to, to uh, everyone. Uh, I find, I've always found the Speaker, Mr Speaker, to be very fair to backbenchers in the House. He always gives us lots of opportunities to participate and be involved, and we're all backbenchers. Uh, so, therefore, we would get a chance to, to uh, respond and ask questions, which we do. Technically speaking, today Peter Bowen uh, put forward uh, a very um, plausible uh, suggestion to the Speaker uh, that he asked could he put an amendment down to, to, to the, the, the proposal on the floor and was told no he couldn't. So you ask yourself a question, why was Peter Bowen unable to do so right. and then there was an arm amendment. So uh, I'm always being respectful. Uh, and, and I always well, there's a question mark in your mind about the impartiality. Yeah, I think that's the way to put it. Yeah. Okay, well let's move on to that uh, because the debate, as uh, I say, is uh, underway. It's still continuing as we speak, and we've taken you out, I'm sure, out of the out of the, the chamber to come here and talk to us about it. Um, Chilling Keegan, what what is your feeling about the prospect of the Prime Minister getting this deal across the line? I mean, everyone seems to accept it. It's dead in the water. Do you still have hope? 100%, and really? only because the way these deals work in Parliament are completely different from the business world. So, you know, I've done loads of commercial negotiation, 30 years worth in the, in the business world. Normally, it, it, what people say, and there's a logic and a pattern in the business world that you can follow, here is very different. You know, people are, are kind of positioning for two or three things at once. Mm. Uh, they will change positions. It's happened right. before. They will use various tactics. Okay. This deal is, first of all, it's a deal that I, I personally am back in. And without anybody asking me to, just using my own experience, if I was in the business world, this would work for me. Uh, if you want to respect the referendum results, if you want to ignore and, it differently. And, and have a smooth transition. And have a smooth transition and have a close cooperative relationship with the European Union afterwards that makes sense and, uh, uh, you know... OK, for, but potentially for, for get stuck in a backstop, which uh, brings... Because you mentioned people changing, changing yeah. their opinions. And that's still so, being negotiated. Well, I've got to bring in Jim. 
Jim Shannon. I mean, the DUP, and, and you know the, the arithmetic. I mean, you've, you've, you've yeah. described process by my change, but the, the arithmetic is without the DUP, if they vote against it, the deal doesn't pass. Jim Shannon, are you, well, are you persuadable? No, no, I'm persuadable if she does away with the backstop. Uh, if she, uh, well, she can't. It's in the well, agreement. Well, well, exactly the present. The, the point there, no, she can't. Or she doesn't seem to be able to, anyway, let's put it that way. Uh, let, let's also be clear, because I said this today to the other ones, there's 119 Conservative, Conservative MPs who have the same concerns about the backstop as we have. So I, I think the arithmetic is much more than just attend the UP. The arithmetic is 119 other Conservative MPs who have also expressed concern. And I have to say, I do not see any diminution in their opinion and their stance as our stance is. Yeah, Alison McGovern, it would be interesting for, for you to expand on Labour's opposition to this deal, because it's of course not about the backstop, it's more from the other side that somehow magically you could have got uh, that uh, the senior members of your party who would have negotiated if they were in government uh, could have got a better a better deal that stayed closer well, to the European let's be clear, Union. Let's, let's be clear first of all on, on, on the Good Friday Agreement. I think that for me being in the single market and the customs union protects the Good Friday Agreement and that would be enough reason, even if there weren't 100 other reasons for that being important, um, uh, which it is. The problem with the Prime Minister's so-called deal, it's not actually a deal. We've got the legal withdrawal agreement, which is necessary mm. if you want to leave the European Union. That's, you know, tying up the legal arrangements of the divorce. The political statement is basically 27 pages of wish list. It's, it's Indeed. do I mean, you believe, the negotiations then do, start you, proper. do you trust and believe that this Prime Minister is able to deliver on it? Now, I respect what Gillian says, but unfortunately, I think there's a lot of Brexiteers mm. who just want to get past March and they will then shred that ah, political agreement. Okay. And that's where there is a massive trust gap. So if we did want to do Brexit in a cross-party way, then the time for reaching out to the Labour Party and saying, how do we have joint negotiating aims, would have been about a year ago. And this is how we've got into this Perhaps mess. after the uh, last election. So yeah. well, well, let's look ahead then to a, a potential plan B, announced, what, Friday week, perhaps uh, next Monday week. Um, what could it be? What could, the, what could the Prime Minister come up with? There's, there's no renegotiation to be had. Do you think it's leading to another referendum, Janine Key? You, you know, the fact is we're all trying to see the future. And it's, it's difficult to say there's no renegotiation to be had. This is basically well, we'll a game time of... time and again from the European uh, Union. People are sticking to their position. So if you listen to everyone's position, you would think nothing is possible. Not one single deal can get through the, United, uh, through the House of Commons. Not one single change. And what you're basically saying is the European Union and all those countries want to risk all of their 45-year yeah. yeah. trading relationship as well as we do for the simple reason of not being able to explain the word um, per, uh, temporary properly. It's ridiculous. Actually, Article 50 says this arrangement, which is a political declaration, which basically Article 50 says right. it can only ever be what it is. So the Prime Minister hasn't done a bad job. Article so, 50 look, structures it in this way. Just to give way. people something they can, and, they and, can and, and hand on. You, you, temporary right. needs to be explained better. You're, you're in better the camp that something in, more in could his, come from that he's the European happy Union. Uh, Jim Shannon, it's interesting. Uh, I mean, given the DUP's stance, I mean, it's not particularly, you know, one way or the other, you just want to be treated exactly the same as any other part of the United Kingdom. So, yeah. I mean, if the Prime Minister came back and said, right, we're going for the Norway option, all of us, the entirety of the United Kingdom, would that, would that satisfy the DUP? Uh, I'm not sure if it would, uh, Dermot, because we've, 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 today I took the opportunity along with my colleague uh, David Simpson to go down and meet some of the, uh, the um, cross-party group of MPs who were talking about Norway too. Um, I want to understand what Norway too is, to be fair. Uh, I want to see what the implications of it are. And, and, and you'd be a good person to understand all that's going on, let me tell you. But uh, just to say this, um, uh, that, that what we're after and what we've always been after is simple. We just want the backstop down the RIC to be removed. OK, well, it would be removed, I mean, if you went, if you went for the Norway, be, 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 because then you're still in the single market. Well, well we asked that question of, of, of two of, the, uh, of my colleagues who were there today, uh, and... and um, uh, they they said that it may be re removed, but the, but they couldn't give that absolute guarantee. Okay, but that, that was well a, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're running out of time, Alison. We've got to hear from you because you know, is Labour heading okay. inevitably to supporting a second referendum? I think you had it right, Dermot. This is all about time, and I su have supported EEA options before. And I think if we have to Brexit, that's the better way to do okay. it. The problem we've got now is time. Dealing with all of these questions and issues, and the clock is Take ticking.
So that plan B has got to be brought forward swiftly. We've got to explain how we are going to resolve this issue. There is no majority for no deal. That is not what people want. We need a practical plan B that can be delivered. OK, but I mean, what would, you know, what, how would Labour help? You talked about, you know, cross-party okay, cooperation. So what, what would Labour propose? What our, what our policy says is, here's our test. Right, you want the general election. Let's, if, let's, if, you want the general election. If, let's presume that doesn't if, happen. If the Prime Minister wants to ring Keir Starmer and say, listen, how do we meet these tests? She can do that. Um, unlike, you know, we'd Number love to have a, we'd love to have a general election, but that's not in our hands. No. Yeah. And if that means we get to the point where the only option left on the table is that the Prime Minister says the House of Commons can't resolve this about my deal, then my right. deal will have to be put to the last, public. Last quick thought from you. I mean, you think, that. I mean, the other one is, is that we're heading for some kind of uh, extension or even revocation of Article 50. Just a quick thought on that, Julian Keegan. Well, it, Marcia it, 29 set in stone for you or not? I mean, it is in the legislation, yeah. so something has to happen mm -hmm. to change the legislation. And I think if you want to extend Article 50, you have to have a reason why you want to extend it. And that reason right. has to make sense, not only to us and everyone in Parliament, sorry, but it also long, has but, to make sure but, it sends yeah. to the EU. But, but could you live with that if there was uh, something better from your point of view coming down the line, Jim Shannon? If there's something better comes, okay. the Prime Minister will put it off. Uh, it'll be a miracle, but I mean, I believe in miracles. Indeed. Okay, uh, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Alison McGovern, uh, <laughs> we, have to, we have to get out of this Brexit mess somehow. We have to unpick this somehow. And even, I think, members of the Cabinet now are acknowledging they're going to need to... Don't forget, nobody's ever done this for a reason. This is not easy. So we're all kind of looking at ourselves saying, this yeah. is a mess. Nobody sure. has ever done it. And it yeah. is a very difficult thing yeah. to do. We are unpicking right. a 45-year agreement, e e and we need to, to work together to okay. get it done. Well, well, thank you all for your thoughts, Gillian Keegan, Alison McGovern, and Jim Shannon. Very good to see you all. Thank you.